<laughs> so you're hey, not, you're not bossy. Anyway, I, I like you to meet Art Carlson. Art is a fellow who lives in the big uh, retirement homeplex here, where my, also my great uncle Kurt lives. And Art is a very special fellow. Art oh. has this special hobby I find very impressive of making large, large model ships out of out of metal. And I think that's, sheet. I want to show some of these to the people. 28 gauge uh, sheet metal. 28 gauge sheet metal. Now let's see, how do I turn this around? Oh, I can't, I have to. <coughs> okay. For example, Art, what have we here? We have a World War II destroyer uh -huh. built in the late 30s, the, the late USS 30s. Hammond. The Hammond, as it says the, down there. The destroyers are named after men who are heroes in the Navy. Okay. And uh, this is a destroyer Hammond. Mm -hmm. He was a hero back in World War I. I see. What did he do? Uh, he was a flyer. Okay. That's all I know about him. It's quite all right. But he, uh, this uh, destroyer is being named after important people. Uh huh. Um, th these were built in, in, uh, in the 30s. Could you pull up a chair so you can sit down and, and point to things for us? Hey, then I could, yeah. I'll get the look. rocker. The rocker? Okay. I, I've never seen model ships done uh, with such fidelity and also with such scale, such size. I, I, I got to say, I'm, I'm fascinated by the fact that you were so interested in this ship that you wanted to do this. Yeah. C can you tell I, us the uh, story about why this ship? All right. They made, uh, this was in the 30s before World War II, but mm -hmm. they must have been gearing up for World War II. They Already. made 12 of these ships. Uh-huh. And uh, of this class, uh, built in the late 30s, middle to late 30s. Mm -hmm. So uh, three of them were lost in the war, including the Hammond, which was sunk, oh, really? sunk in the bottle of Mid Battle of Midway. Oh, really? So this yeah. was part of Midway, was it? This was part of Midway. And I have pictures of the Hammond pulling us all alongside the carrier, trying to salvage it to tow it back to oh, Hawaii. You showed me that. Right. I, I don't know if you want to see those pictures. Well, we can I have, get them out later. I'll take them out later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, the size, I made all my ships quarter-inch scale. Quarter-inch scale. 12 to, four, 12 to 48. Gotcha. Quarter-inch to the foot. So every foot in yeah. real life is a quarter-inch. Quarter-inch. Here. So this it comes to about seven feet. Uh, I don't <laughs> I remember how many feet this was, but the Kennedy I have here was was over eight feet, quarter inch scale. We'll get to the Kennedy in a so, second. But so the, anyway. Yeah, you're saying, sorry. The portholes. Uh, so this is, this it's is all a, metal. These all are metal. pieces of metal that you trim just right and they fit next to each other. And then you like filled in the gaps before painting. I, I uh, if, uh, how could I explain that? I had pictures of the frames. They built real ships with frames, and mm -hmm. then they put, they put the steel um, the plates. plates on there. Yeah. Uh, welded. Well, the first they used to do rivets many years ago, but right. they, they started welding. Now, okay. this ship, of course, uh, in the 30s didn't have air conditioning, so they had to have portholes. Right. And they also had uh, crow's nests. Right, so you could climb up there and see. So they could look for the enemy. Right. Where the later model ships didn't have crow's nests, they like the Kennedy didn't oh, have. Oh, because they had the radars. That was built in 45, something like that. The Kennedy over there. The we'll, Kennedy. We'll look at that one in a second. Yeah. Uh, there are interesting features on this ship. Please. Would you like to see oh, what this... Oh, absolutely. All right. I'll, uh, we'll lift this thing off of here, ah. and you can see the inside. Yes. The hull work. Uh, I see. Okay. The, so here are those. The ribs or the frames. These and right I, here, the ribs are like the, the slices this the, way. Yes, right. And you can then, see the brass keel on the bottom. And then that, that long brass square rod 
Yes. And that's what you measured from and, and attached from. And, and then there's solder in there that you did. They're soldered. Some are soldered. Some I did with epoxy. Okay. Uh, now you can tell that, like this one, it's all soldered. Ah, uh, yes. All the parts. I uh, see, like these little, is that like old flux there in these corners? Yes. I see, I and, see. Uh, they're spot soldered. Okay. It held pretty good. Yeah. I've made uh, tabs or flanges that they could, I could solder to. Okay, sure. Okay. And then, of course, I, I thought I'd make it for water, so I raised the deck so water wouldn't get in. Right. And this would fit over this, uh, uh -huh. these flanges. Uh, oh, one other thing I should show you. Please. I mean, this was difficult. Wah. But I had to make it. There are three uptakes from the boiler rooms, mm -hmm. all brought into one stack. Okay. So they. I, I wonder guess, why they did that. What was the idea? Tell you what, if one boiler room was was uh, damaged mm -hmm. or, or flooding, they still had boiler rooms. They still had uh, control of the ship. Oh, well, of course, multiple boilers, but I wonder why just one smokestack. That's what I wonder. I don't know. That's the way they designed these. That's how they did it. Because a lot of later ones had tw twin stacks, uh -huh. you, which you see on the Kennedy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Um, oh, yes, of course. There they are. Oh, and also stacks. Was this made for coal originally? Was what? Was this, was this ship made for coal originally, or was no, it from oil? it was made oil? strictly for, this was uh -huh. oil. Okay. It was an oil burner. Gotcha. They started coming out with oil burners sometime in the late 30s, late 30s. when they made these. So these weren't coal, but World War I, they were all coal burners. Oh, man. Smoky ones. Think about that. How do you sneak up on people when you're That's right. spitting out that black soot everywhere? Uh, model railroad stores had the uh, ladders for their boxcars and uh -huh. trains. Uh -huh. I uh, used them on the ship. They were about the right scale. And then you, all of this detail here, the places to stand, yes. and is there a little is a spy glass up there? That is uh, the horn. The horn, oh, okay. So they had the horn. And then to be able to walk around here, they could hold on to one of these as they walked on these yeah. to get around. This uh, flue pipe, I imagine, was for steam or something. I don't know. Some kind but of. But I put it together the way they had it. Some kind of dump for used steam or. Yep. Control circuit steam, or I don't know. I'm just Whatever. Then, of course, I had detail. These doors here yeah. for the different flues. Here's one that's open. Uh -huh. uh, they, they take in the air as it, uh, right. as it, uh, as they went forward, you know, there'd be an intake for air. I don't know. I, I did it. That's what it called for. So. Okay. Okay. But you can see how. Oh, yeah. All these. Oh, boy. So you did like a bunch of experiments with like paper and cardstock, trying to figure uh, at, out. At first, and then I yeah. paste it on tin right, and right. cut out the patterns, yeah. and then pass them that way. This yeah. was uh, soldered. But what I really like about what you've done here is how here we have a very you know these are complex shapes. Look, at, we're looking at here. Some were. And it was through the paper, like paper and tape and glue method that you could figure out how to then transfer that shape yes. onto the metal. As I made the hull, it was upside down. Uh -huh. I take paper or, or cardboard mm -hmm. and get the size mm -hmm. and then cut out on tin, put it on. Then I'd, for the next one, I'd have to use paper to f fit to the previous piece I put on, the metal. You right. understand? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I kept putting it together in pieces. Uh -huh. yeah. Framing the sides, 28 gauge sheet metal. 28 gauge sheet metal for furnaces, you know, in homes. Oh, okay. I take your word for it. Now here, here's our next really big treat. Uh, now these two guns here. This is 40 millimeter and 40 millimeter. No, Have I got they're that right. They're five inch. Five, five inch. inch. They called them five inch 38s. Now the 38, I don't know what that meant. It could have been length of the barrel or something. Is that our shell over here? That's the shell. I was going to show oh, yeah, you yeah, that yeah. shell. So, so yeah. we, <laughs> I love this. So, uh, they pull, put canopies, and they, where they put them, what do they call them things again? That covers would be, or? Uh, turrets. Turrets. Steel turrets. They here they had two open mounts. For some the reason. The war broke out. They, they took these open mounts off. Uh -huh. They put gun tubs on these things, 
and uh, made them more modern for warfare. Gotcha. They kept those on the fantail for uh, submarine duty. Uh, and these are they contraptions would, for dropping the, the depth charges. Depth charges. Those little, Roll off the bottom, and right they were the timed to go off at different depths, you know. So someone like would be... feet, 100 feet, whatever. Someone standing out here, like, turning a dial on them or something? I have no idea how they did that. Uh. They had some kind of release. Some guy have to release the depth charge. They'd fall in. And they wouldn't detonate till they're, you know, far behind. Uh-huh. One of the themes I think I see here is that even in this generation, like the idea of naval warfare, sorry, naval aircraft yeah. hadn't really set in yet. So we have all of these duties in places where people would be standing around exposed, right? I'm sure whereas, they were. Yeah. Whereas over here on the Kennedy, your next boat... You don't see open turrets at all. Everything's yeah. enclosed because everyone's getting shot at, yes. I imagine. But, but on the Kennedy, they uh -huh. had open uh, gun turrets. Oh, gun, really? Oh, yeah, gun for anti-aircraft. For the 40 millimeter. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Now, this over here, this is this is a real treat. So, 38, sorry, the 5-inch, five 5-inch. Five inch. They're 5-inch. The, so and, and they and had then, more here, too, Then right? the two at the bow, a single gun, single uh, mount, single mount. And then there is Which the, leads us to... And that's the... Boom! Size, that's the tire size of the... You actually have... With the powder can. With the powder can. And yep. so, oh yeah, we zoom in, we can read the words here. It's kind of damaged, it's hard to read now. Oh, it's fine. Five inch, 38 casing and projectile. Yeah. So these things would be full of powder already, right? Yes. They but had they, that plug on the end so it wouldn't fall out. Right, you know? and there was that, that plastic it was, piece. It was to slide down inside there. That guy down there, and that would plug it all up. And yeah. then this guy would be, oh. I don't know what distance they could fire them. I'd guess about seven miles or so. Okay. And A battleship it, could fire them about 20 miles, but these were a shorter uh, distance. And they would store these separately. They stored them down. Bring them, bring yes. them together at the last minute in the, in the gun. They had... The equipment elevators, I'd bring them up to the top, and I don't think they had to manhandle them. I, I don't know if they had machinery on these or not, now, I look but they at were this, pretty heavy to, to haul around. I see there's like this screw. That'll that, come off, too, if you wanted to take it off. And, oh, yeah, like this. Like, was this, and then, they had, does this screw from this, too? I don't know how... I don't know too much about it. I'd sure like to find out. Like, were they dialing these things with, like, ranges or something? Uh, yeah. It'd either that or when they'd go Ooh. detonate. Everything is heavy steel. Yeah. And then these are the power containers. And that's here. where all the kerblasto is. And, the, and the sh this thing is about a quarter inch thick. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, so. <laughs> and then when they, I imagine some of these are armor piercing. Uh-huh. And some were to detonate and shrapnel would fly all over. Right. I'm sure that's the way they were used. Like gunnery isn't just, they're not just one kind of these things. Like they're constantly changing. Oh. They could change up, right? They could use a bunch of these, but they could change well, these at the last it, minute. With the powder bags, but these I think they had just used one. Yeah, yeah. They, they couldn't put, uh, they could only put in one behind the, uh, uh -huh. behind this. Uh, uh -huh. Let's see here. So let's let's, so, let's just come. Let's, I'm really interested. So this was 36. Is that what you said? The Hammond was 36, 1936. 1930 after in that period of time. Okay. In the 30 in the period of time in the late 30s. And then just going what? A few years later. That now we're in, at the end of World War II, right? This is during the World War II. During. Toward the end of World War II. And look how everything changed. No more crow's nest. No more crow's nest, just radar wizardry. And got all kinds of the, the bed screen, I think they called that. Bed screen, uh, okay. And then they had this for uh, oh, uh, this the stuff. targets. Uh, oh, I see. So they're, they're like targeting and finding things with yeah. the radar, not with yeah, telescopes. There were, and stuff. there were men inside of this thing. There. Oh, yeah? They could, they opened it up. It was like, a, I don't know, I wish I knew something about it, I, but I don't. These are for aircraft. For finding airplanes? They're looking for your target. The one is for airplanes. Oh, I, I see. And maybe those things like tied in with these? Or they and tied in with... Somehow or another, 
Yeah. They could give the information to these guys. They'd load the guns. They didn't see where they were firing, but they would fire when they were commanded to fire. They just did what they were told. When they were on target. So yeah. there was someone probably in here who was looking at some screens here. and dials from that. Yeah. Or, or something. From here, I believe. Telling see, them what to do. A lot of this do. I don't know. It's quite all right. I, uh, I've been to that, uh, that museum in, uh, what's it called, Norfolk, Virginia? Norfolk. It's, uh, oh, it's a naval museum? Yeah. Okay. And they have these example. I've seen them, these um, World War II era artillery gunnery computers that have all these spinny dials and okay. wheels and all this crazy. That was in World War II? That's right. That was for computing how to aim them and how to take in well, messages. Well, they were sure updated. They were sure up to date on this stuff because uh, I've got to show you. Please. Here's a 20, that's a twin of. 40 millimeter, and you saw the 40 millimeter uh, shell. Oh, yeah, right over here. I have it on the table. These guys. You want me to bring it over here? Yeah, sure. So we have one ready to go shell. Ready to go. Oh, okay. Man. Careful with that. All right. Uh -huh. Over here, like this one was a twin, mm -hmm. and then they had sets of quads. Uh huh. Four of them. Oh, no, three of them okay. back here. So these guys were now much more accustomed to being shot at from airplanes. Like, you can yeah. see how they were, naval aircraft was a thing now. These guys were all in the air, all in the open. And they were, yeah, okay. And this is the size of shell for these quad 40s. God, just shooting those like crazy. And how I can explain, I don't know. But these were the, the gun directors. Here's one uh, for here. Okay. There's the one for this one. It's over there. They had another one for that one. So were these things like, were these on like they, electric they, machines that they, spun them around? You know, I really don't know. They were controlled. They were powered, I guess. Uh, there was a trainer. There were two guys sitting here. Okay. There was other guys that would take these shells and set them in the breach, four at a time. In those mighty so clips. that clip, those clips. Guys running around with clips of 40 millimeter anti-aircraft yeah, shells. They had to put them in fast. Boom, 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 boom. And boom, then boom, the boom, boom. clips would fall off, and they have to keep setting them in. Golly. Set them down in the breach. It's a lot of tonnage. Yeah. yeah and I noticed that the stacks are lower, too. There must be some yeah. story uh, there. Yeah, really, it must be. They all had that pipe behind them, which I could never figure out. They, each one, they all had that. Oh, them. yeah, there it is again. Yeah, right there. Then they had these things you could walk on Still to walk around this thing. I have no idea what these were, but they had them on all, a lot of the ships. Ah. She is a mystery. And no, oh, I have a lot of mysteries. They had the searchlight on here. Oh, yeah. As you can see. Handy. And they had nine of these nets with uh, baskets. Okay. They carried nets with corks. All right. So when they were, the ship would sink, these would float, and the guys could hang on to these. And I believe that would keep them help to, uh, keep them together. Oh. I think so. Oh, they would like it's like a floating fishing net that all the guys could grab onto. They they maybe protect themselves from sharks too. I don't know. At least, oh, I don't know. But you see, there's two of them back there, and, and there there's a couple up in the front there. And then this is for shooting. Those torpedoes, are torpedoes, right? Yep. A torpedo. I guess they're about. 21 feet long or something like that. Or and somebody's riding around on that 20, little yeah, seat Yeah, two there. guys would sit on that thing, and they would direct it. And they got the information from the torpedo director, which is up here. This is a torpedo director right there. Oh, he's, I see. He's standing that was, here. That's his little telescope thing. Right. And there was one on each side. Okay. Of course. So, it's, so someone's riding around on this giant thing full of... Exp and you know how they loaded the torpedoes on these things? They had a crane. Oh, there it is. They'd pick them up from the deck, uh -huh. lift them, and slide it into the tube. Man, you got to be careful doing that. So you that's, be that's, careful. How, that's how that worked. Boy, oh, boy. And then, of course, beside that, you know, they had fire hydrants all over around here with the hoses yeah, you for bet. protection. They had one here, and they had, they had, they had one back there. I see one. And fire hydrants there. in the front. Up at the bow, they had fire hydrants. They Fighting didn't the have lamp. them. Oh, you see it there? I, I think so. I'm not, well, shoot, I'm not sure which one is which. I see all this uh, gear for handling the, the anchor. See. I see that. Okay. Well, 
So it's like destroyer history, really, like uh, yep. the beginning and the end. Of course, and they, only, they only had one. This is uh, the officer's uh, for the commander. Well, it's, okay, so the officer got it. That's not a lifeboat. Yeah. That's like his launch. His, and then, uh, of course, when they sank, they also had these uh, oh, okay. guys to so hang on to. These are the, the lifeboats. Yep. And then also these net things with the corks. I don't know. Yeah, that's the cork things. I see, I see. This is uh, for training. They would train on these loading. They were uh, for like loader outfits. I don't know where practice. they could practice for the uh -huh. uh, for the big guns for the five inch thirty eights. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, right. what else? Man, you know they had these. They didn't want to dump these in the sea after they fired their projectile. They had these. They saved them. They dropped them through hats, and they kept them down inside there. They piled them up oh, inside. Oh, I see. They would in that little. Uh, so they tried to preserve and save that stuff. This uh, this laundry basket you, yeah, here. Yeah, there it is. That's what hold it. Full of all that brass, left over. Now depth charges, anti-submarine work. Mm -hmm. They they rolled them off the fantail. Gotcha. They also called what they called K guns. K guns. That would fire them off into the air and drop them alongside. So I've they had a, quite a spread of torpedoes, yeah, I've seen those or of, in movies. Uh, of uh, depth charges. I've seen those in movies, haven't I? I think I have. All right. So these propellers were, uh, I think they were 11 foot 6 or 12 feet. Mm -hmm. So I got three inch propellers, which would be 12 feet, which is almost the same scale. The ship was a four, four blade, twin four blades. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The other ship was a three blade. Man, just like some of these things you got from a catalog, right? Like the, like these guys here. Yeah, and, yeah. You know the boat there, the, the life rafts. Yep. But, and, I know, got this too. Guns. I got that too. That's plastic. But everything all is of metal. This, everything here is. This here, metal. this here, it's all, all metal. All the form of the superstructure here. Let me guess. Even this too. Yep. Well, I'll take one off. Okay. Would they like to see it? Sure. There Ooh, that's the uh, wow with the bearings and everything. The metal. I see. Got the I metal. See. And then, and then uh, these oh, were yeah. staples. Okay, yeah, staples. Gotcha. These pieces, these hinges were pinheads. Yep, I see it now. So, and there's some kind of for a, that detail. And there's like a bearing system that you figured out. Oh, that's the, uh, that base was bolted down. You see all the bolts on that thing? I think I do. Oh, oh, sure, yeah. I just mean you figured out a uh, uh, some kind of contraption to insert that onto. I so had to buy them too, ah, okay. but they had it for that that size. Gotcha. This made it so nice, you know. I see. I see. Um, All right. Let's go see the landing craft. What do you say? Say the what? Let's go check it out. Uh, that check out landing LST? craft. LST. Yeah, the LST. Okay. Landing ship tank. The LST. Okay. Yeah. All right, was there anything else, I wonder? The later ships, you know, after the war, they took mm -hmm. this mast down. They made tripods. They rechanged everything. Okay. So this is what it was, the as built in 19, in the 1946, 47. No, no, just before the war ended. Like 42, 43, I guess. All right, and here's one like it in action. That's one like it, yeah. That's the kid. USS Kid. Oh man, a little different class of ship, though. Somewhat different. Kablam. Man. So, but the stacks were pretty much the same. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you know, it's a painting. That style of painting in the late oh, the two tone days of the war. Two tone. They had dark, and then they had Let's light see. gray, like they have Just down there. Da, 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 da. Then they had the light above. Gotcha. No portholes on this one, huh? They didn't put portholes that air conditioning then. Oh, like a forced air system. I guess so, yeah. Okay. Oh, what else could we show you here? I, there are things on here I couldn't explain. I don't know anything about them. Well, uh, let's switch to the LST. Huh? Let's go to the LST. Okay. Because this is some real, this is a, not just a ship, it's a machine. So check this out. 
you know, this team was designed. Can you give us the lights over there? Yeah. So that light may not help. Well, it's something. So here we have. So it looks kind of shippish, but there's some very curious features on this guy. They you can tell this is something special. Big and bulky. Right. Just to carry equipment. Carrying tanks. Down below they had 28 tanks. Right. Up like above they carried the lighter stuff. Ambulances, jeeps, trucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's that called? A half track? Half tracks. Yeah, different types of... And the Sherman tanks were down below. All right. And this stuff was all made in Europe. Really? I couldn't get it. They weren't made here. You got them down there ready to go? Well, I have some down inside. And then... So this is a, these are LCVPs. Wow. They carried troops. So and you guys could jump out of this. This was all about the Italy invasion, right? Uh, well, they used them all over. They used oh, really? Them in Europe, and they used them all over in the Pacific. Oh, okay. All the islands, too. Or many of the islands. Gotcha. So, so they carried... Mm -hmm. You know, they had truckloads. I didn't have the trucks. They had truckloads of food and supplies. Sure. Loaded on the deck. Ready to go as soon Ready as they hit the deck, hit the ground. So you see this this uh, runner back down in here. Yes. They would raise that up, take, empty the tanks out afterwards. Mm -hmm. After they unloaded the top, mm -hmm. take the off. So we can, you so, know. So you would finish loading off, uh, unloading the top, the top deck, then and the then heavy stuff would, underneath. And then this would mm, get raised up. Yep. And then all the things below decks could get to the door. Yeah. I don't know why they carry these extra barrels of gas. Yeah, me. I imagine for fuel for the for the tanks and stuff, they'd roll them off the side, they'd float ashore. So I've seen this kind of feature in airplanes, like cargo craft, you know, like the one you yeah. got off in, in yeah. Korea. But this, I, I had no idea they made boats like this. So yep. this would get raised up. Yep, then they close the doors. And the doors would close. Yeah. And this. I, yeah, mm -hmm. Something that really impressed me. This is. Uh, oh, here we go. oh yeah, yeah. Right, this right. is what they looked like when they were. That's it. That's it. This is like in Italy, you know. Right, and there they and are. And they had the ramps with the chains. Uh huh. And they'd pull them up. And they would just, just push themselves onto the beach and go for it. Yeah. Look at this. And and they were. They were used all over. They had thousands of these ships uh, that they had built. Thousands. And um, what and a fe another feature they had, they wouldn't get stuck on the beach. Yeah, I, yeah this is really cool. Yeah, tell us all about. They this. had this anchor. Yeah. And they had a, a, a wrench back here, a steel cable. Mm -hmm. I don't know what size of it, a quarter inch, or if it was a three quarters of an inch or what. It was pretty fat, but, whatever it was. But I they promise. dropped it about 200 yards out, I think. Mm -hmm. And they'd, uh, they'd unreel it as they got into the beach runner, pulling out. They could pull themselves out. They'd reel themselves out so, and reverse their engines. So on their way to the beach, they would drop this anchor. Further out. Kaplunk. Then they would unreel that cable so they could get pull away them. from it. Yep. They would push themselves just uh, up onto that beach. Yeah. And yep. then when they had to back off, they could because they could... You reel back in that anchor. Reel, reel it and use the props too to reverse. Oh, yeah, they right. also had skids so the props wouldn't get caught in the rocks and sand right, right. to protect the... Uh, then, right. of course, they all had these uh, bumpers for a pier, you know. I see, I see. All this is soldered on. I, I just think it's so impressive that they invented this machine. A, a, a ship you that's know, supposed to beach itself. A yep. ship that is made Something different. to Nobody run aground. Made. Yep. made to run aground. And then, of course, I was on one, uh, uh, visiting. Mm -hmm. They got gas tanks and oxygen tanks here. They had on it, strapped on it. I suppose for work. Yeah, for welding. For welding or whatever they needed it for. There's a lot of machines here, lots of things to break, I imagine. Yeah. And then you got four landing craft here. But I've seen versions of this with, like, in, in the picture book you had? Yeah. There are many versions of this, right? Wasn't there a version that even had a, an air deck for an airplane yeah, for, to take for off? A, small a Piper awesome. search plane or a, what do you call it, a small propeller plane. Oh, golly. They built the, deck, the landing strip right on that thing. The plane could take off, I guess. I just love it. Yeah. And all of this detail with the, the boats and all of this. 
the davits and everything? These I had made. They're out of plastic. Okay. Because uh, two, I couldn't make that stuff out of tin. It'll take you forever. And then even this detail you included of all of these air holes here. There are many air holes. Oh, those are at exhaust. They were, they had fans in them. Right. And when they start up to all those tanks inside, right. they would uh, have to exhaust the uh, gases. Everyone, everyone would just die. So they had two of them back here, they had three here, and they had four of them up in the front. So they That's even it. accounted for that. They had to probably open the bar door so that fresh air would come in as they're sucking and pulling the air out. You know? Right, right. So the guys wouldn't get asphyxiated, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, they also had... A lot of hoses, mm -hmm. fire hydrants. There's a hydrant uh -huh. up there, I think. Oh yeah. And back here they had hoses. There's hose. Here's a hydrants mm -hmm. on both sides. So mm -hmm. they were equipped for firefighting. You have all these vehicles full of gasoline just standing around waiting oh. to get shot at. Oh boy, they burn fast, you know. Yeah, yeah. I would want so. a lot of those things too. Man, I uh, even... imagine. Even, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the hull would be, I'm sure, quarter inch uh, steel plates. Because it, it wouldn't break when it beached itself. It would go right up onto that beach. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like the bow here was like holding up all of this sagging right. weight of the ship, right? Yeah. Right. So it must have been just super strong to not yeah. break when that happened. They probably put heavier plate, steel plate on the bow there yeah. and rub against the, uh, the beach and the rocks. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine the naval architect sitting around saying, well, we need, to, we need to make a special boat that is going to run aground on purpose. Yeah. Huh? What do we do for that? And are these are the, uh, are these the 40 millimeters that, that those we looked are, at? Those are, uh, those are the single barreled 40s. That's the twin 40. These are single 40s. And these smaller ones are 20s. Okay. You saw the 20 millimeter. Oh, right, right. I use these uh, Q-tips to, to do some cleaning around here. Okay, gotcha. It picks up a lot of dirt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the oh, thing is dirty. Boy. It's hard to clean. Oh, hey, you know, they still have these in Seattle, actually. Yeah, I, I've seen a lot of them up here at the, in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah? They, they, they use them. Right. I've yet to get on one, yeah. but I'm sure I'd yeah. have a good time. I have a... Oh, what else have I got here? This is a... Well, here we go. This is a larger one. This is a model that I'm... This is also a quarter-inch scale. Uh-huh. This is a, it's a twin screw. They could carry a truck or whatever and a lot of screws. They oh, use a okay. lot of these in Normandy. I see. So it's not just the guys that have one that have fellas on it, They're but just also... For, they had a bigger ones for... A vehicle. Some, yeah. They, they use these on a lot of beaches. They could hold a lot, and they were a twin screw, twin engine. Mm. So, something about them. Man. Yeah. This one is a typical deuce and a half, but it cost me too much to make that. I had to buy the kit. Okay. But they had a lot of these. I see. And I deuce wish there were half. more of them. Mm. Deuce and a half. Without the wheels, they broke off. I've got to figure out how to 3D print those so we can save some money. I don't know how to do it, but... There's got to be some way to use the 3D printer to make some knockoff deuce and a halves. Deuce and a half. I see one wheel is missing. I have it someplace. Mm. But these models cost a lot to buy them. Yeah. The kits. This, of course, was a self-propelled artillery. We don't not classify it as a tank, but they use for artillery. I see. I see. Then, of course. A lot of the vehicles then were from World War, were from old vehicles. Okay. And then you have a, what kind of tank is that? Oh, yeah, this is where Under I got my tanks. And these are made in Europe. Uh-huh. People, if you remember, you, can you read that? Is that, a, is that a Sherman? Yeah. M4A3 Sherman Blockbuster. 150th they're, scale. They were, they now, 150th was close to 1 to 48. Yeah, close enough. 1 to 48 and 150. Yeah. They're just a fraction smaller. I won't but tell. Who would know it? You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah, and here's one. This had some kind of 
Attachment yeah. for landmines? Is that what that's for? Uh, no, I think it was to shovel or to push themselves through uh, hedge groves oh. uh, or mounds or something. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't, couldn't identify that. You know, this is how I made my handrails. Solder. Oh, okay. That's what they looked like. So Took a lot are. of time. Before and after. Yeah, that's similar. Sticking them onto paper and then... Yes, I glued yeah, them on yeah. paper. I drew out... The size with the ruler, the size and the post and stuff. And then I'd tape the wire down and then I'd solder it. See the little drops of solder? Sure, sure. That's how I made them. Well done. All my railings were made like that. Okay. Well done. See, I, I didn't have a lot of these. But they had trucks mm -hmm. with trailers for food and equipment and ammunition. Ah. They, uh, they hauled them out there. Oh, there. little pull wagons there. A, uh, here's a water tank over here. Oh, for water. They, they needed fresh water. I see. So everything is brought ashore for the shock troops, for the troops that landed on the beach. Gotcha. After they established the beachhead. Right, right. Yeah. So. Oh, yes. That's about it. I got this stuff here at a model store. This is, uh, this is a rope supposed to be the rope. It's not ordinary string. It's a rope for models, ship models. Model rope. For models. Of yeah. course there's a model Sailing rope. ships. And then, of course, I got the black stuff was electric cables. And then ah. the thin stuff was for flags. These, okay. So you got it right. You got to use the black stuff for, for electrical cables. Uh, yeah. And the whites for ropes. So. Why not? And then, of course, you got the flag bags. Every ship had flag bags. Flag you raise bags. up the flags with, with a different alphabet, you know. Oh, okay. Flag bags. That's what they call them. Flag bags. But I went to a lot of detail with these little motors here. Can you get behind it? Okay. So these little motors, or let's see uh, if we come around it, this it, way. I don't know if you can see them. Mm. You see the cables and stuff in there. Uh, let's see, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. Oh, that's hard to explain. Uh, here's, a, here's a motor here with a cable under there going up this pulley going up here, which uh -huh. could control and lower the davit ah. and then drop the boat into the water. I see. So that's the way that worked. Man. Hey, do you, you don't have the plans anymore, do you? I wish I did. You know, I gave that to a plan who was on, who served on one of these. He yeah. was so excited. I gave him the plans, and then he died, and I don't know what happened. Oh, man. He was an old guy at the time. He was all excited about this. Well, all right. Hey, Art, this has been a great time. But then, as you know, a lot of these are 1 to 50 instead of 1 to 48, so... There's not much difference in size, just a fraction. A teeny bit. So they are pretty close to the size. Uh-huh. And there's all that front work with the... Open the bay doors, that lowering ramp. Mm. Uh, the being the, the whole thing is so spacious. Cruise quarters were on a narrow walkway on both sides where they slept. Oh, right. What about that, anyway? Yeah, yeah I see. So there's like a little bit of a of width here, of thickness, close to the plating where the guys were. Right. You could go down in there through these. You go down the steps okay. and right into those rooms. Okay, that's the, st okay, that's the stairwell right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. On that's each side, there's a stairwell. Uh, I also have what else? Oh, oh okay, yeah. All right. So, hey. Well, anyway. It's been our pleasure. <laughs> it's been our pleasure. I had a great time. Thank you very I much for showing that. me around. It was great. Very good. We should. We'll do we this again. Be fun to do it.